Hello, welcome back to the Archuria 3 pigment series. Today we're talking about envelopes, which is, of all the modulation sources, probably the most important because it's what's being used every time I press a key on the keyboard. In order for you to hear a sound, an envelope is opening and allowing that sound to flow through some sort of pipe. And when I let go of the key, the note stops. So that's what we're going to look at today, but we're going to expand that concept and have a look uh, at how it can be used as a, a more generic modulation source. So here we have our three envelopes, and can you see the first one's called NVCA. Envelope number one is hardwired to the keyboard to produce exactly this functionality. Can you see down here we've got a thing called gate source. I'm going to talk about gates in a moment, but it's actually greyed out. We can't disconnect the keyboard from envelope VCA. And in fact, if we have a look at the zoom view of NVCA, here's our routing to the um, to the outside world, to the voltage controlled amplifier, and we can't take it away. So it's permanently connected. Right, let's have a very quick chat about gates. What's a gate? Well, a gate is something that opens and stays open until it closes, <laughs> as opposed to a trigger, which is a momentary happening. So a trigger happens instantly and is done whereas a gate extends over a period of time. So a gate can have an opening and then a period while it's open and then a closing as opposed to a trigger, which is in, in time references, just a single straight line. So here we have our gate source. What's the thing that's allowing this envelope to operate? Well, it's the keyboard, the poly keyboard. So when I press a key on the keyboard, the gate opens, the gate stays open, until I let go of the key. So what's happening during that period of time? Well, what's happening is that this envelope shape is being drawn. And what we have here is something called an attack, decay, sustain, release envelope, the most common of all types of envelope. When I press the key on the keyboard, I've just moved some of these um, settings. So I've changed the shape of the envelope. And what's gonna happen now when I press the key is that you're going to get a gradual increase of volume rather than an almost instantaneous one. That's the attack phase. Up to this first white dot here is the attack phase. And this literally says over this period of time, which is 4.2 seconds, you can see the um, highlighted text box, we're going to apply a modulation amount. So this line represents an amount of modulation that's being applied to something and the something is our volume. The VCA or the voltage controlled amplifier is basically treated like your volume knob. So over 4.2 seconds, the thing gets louder. When it gets to the end of the attack phase, it enters the decay phase. And this is the distance between the first little white dot and the second white dot. This is our decay phase. Over the course of that period of time, we could, in this case, for instance, just hold our volume static. So I'm going to make my attack period a little bit shorter. And now you can hear the volume is stable. But it doesn't have to be. And that's why it's called the decay phase, because it decays down to the next point, which we'll come to shortly. And you can see that we've drawn this curvy line. The line is slightly curved because we have a decay curve. If I change the decay curve knob, you can see the shape of this line changing. And now, as the decay phase extends, the volume gets quieter according to that amplitude, at that modulation change. So at the end of the decay phase, we reach our sustain point. Now sustain is the one part of the ADSR envelope that's different to the other four because sustain is a level setting or an amplitude setting rather than a time-based setting. So when we're talking about attack and decay and release, which we'll get onto shortly, they're all defined in periods of time, whereas sustain is defined as an amplitude or an amount. So when we increase or decrease the sustain knob, we're not going forwards and backwards in time, we're going up and down in amplitude. And the sustain point is what amplitude or in this case, volume, do we stick at until the gate closes? So here's my decay phase, descending down to the sustain point, 
and now as long as I hold this key down you're going to hear exactly the same volume. Now when I let the key go the sound disappeared almost instantaneously that's because we have a very short release phase on this envelope but we can change that. So I'll bring these both in and now we'll give ourselves a release phase. Now I'm just going to try to drag up with my mouse. I can't drag this point anywhere other than zero. So release only extends on the x-axis because at the end of your release cycle, you are done. Now this brings us on to another interesting subject when it comes to envelopes, which is that they're always positive. Everything that we describe with an envelope is always positive. And at the end of the envelope, once we're done, we're gonna be at a point where our modulation amount, our amplitude is at zero. But now that I've dragged the release point out to make this curve longer, you're gonna hear when I let the key go, now we have a release phase. In other words, the sound fades away gradually. And you also see that the release phase is curved and we can't do anything about that. That's an exponential curve and it's actually hardwired in pigments. We can't change the shape of this particular curve, but we can change the shape of the decay curve and the attack curve. Then to the right of the decay and release buttons, we've got some little link symbols. And regardless of which one I click, they both come on and they both turn off together. So these two controls, I think this is actually a little bit redundant. I only really need one of them, but it's basically telling you that you can, that you can connect the decay and the release controls together. And if we link them and move one knob, the other knob changes identically. And you're basically locking these two um, phases together so that you deal with them simultaneously. Now, having done so, having entered link mode, we now get the ability to change our release curve because the decay curve operates on both sides of that point. One thing that I don't think I've mentioned explicitly actually um, up until now, is you, you know when I've talked about right-clicking on these controls to get really fine um, control over the knob, so I've right-clicked here and I'm getting really tiny changes. You can actually do the same thing by pressing the control key on your keyboard and then do a left click with your mouse. I never do that, I just use the right mouse button, but um, it is there if you want it. Let's take it back out of link mode to give ourselves a little bit more flexibility with what this envelope looks like. And let's see what that sounds like. That's a very long release curve. I'll just bring that in a bit. Now the next control I want to talk about is gate source, but because envelope VCA um, is locked to the, the keyboard and only the keyboard, we're going to jump across to envelope 2. So what I'm going to do is map my envelope 2 to the filter cutoff, and then we can have a bit of a play with the different gate sources and see what options are available to us. So the first thing that I'm going to do is simply click the plus button, that opens up all of my modulation options and I'm going to increase the amount of envelope 2. And now I've just mapped envelope 2 to my cutoff. Now if you look on the ring, the modulation ring of the filter cutoff, it looks like no modulation's actually been applied. Remember when I said earlier that envelopes are only positive? Well, the cutoff knob's currently turned all the way up, so all of the modulation is happening in an area that basically has no meaning. If I turn the cutoff knob down, then you'll see the thick ring appear. And here is our 0 0.5, 0 0.45 modulation that we've just set, basically coming into play. So the modulation of an envelope is always positive. So what's gonna happen when I hit a key is that this envelope shape is gonna be applied to the filter cutoff. It's gonna very quickly come up to maximum and very quickly go back down again. Now, as things stand, you're going to hear very little sound for two different reasons. I'll play the keyboard very quickly. So there's two reasons why that was really quite inaudible. One is that we've got a really fast envelope on the filter, so it's turning up and turning back down again very, very quickly. But that's not the real reason why it's so quiet. It's because I've still got my envelope, my amplitude envelope, set from previously. And you can see that over this period of time, 
over 379 milliseconds, the amplitude or volume of the sound is being increased to its maximum point. But the filter envelope has an attack value of basically nothing and a decay value of 300 milliseconds. So by the time we get up to full volume, the filter is done and has drawn its entire shape. And so those two things are kind of crossing each other out and we're not hearing any sound. If I take the amplitude velocity completely out of the equation, now you're hearing more clearly defined notes, but they're still really staccato, really, really quick. So I'm gonna pick this control up, this uh, attack value, and just make it a little bit longer. 47 milliseconds. And now we're starting to get something that genuinely sounds like a usable sound. I'm gonna mess with my amplitude envelope even more to take it completely out of the equation. And now we can start sculpting our filtered sound. So the relationship between volume and filter is really intrinsic, really important. When you, whenever you're dealing with envelope sculpting, make sure that something else isn't like interfering with you and stopping you hearing what you really wanna hear. We can always bring amplitude envelopes back in once we're done sculpting the sound. So now that I've set my volume and filter envelopes to stick to have a sustain point of maximum, when I hold the key down, it doesn't fade away on me until I'm ready for it to. And having done that, I can give longer release phases to both the amplitude and the filter. And so when I let go of the key, Both the volume gets lower and the filter cutoff pulls back simultaneously. Generally speaking, you'll find that envelopes are usually given a tiny curve rather than being set absolutely vertically. And it just immediately brings like an instant win to your sound. Almost everything almost always sounds better with a tiny little bit of envelope rather than, you know, straight lines. Right then, finally we've got to the stage where we can start talking about gate source. So up until now, everything has been triggered off the keyboard. My pressing of the key opens the gate, the envelope does its thing, starts drawing its shape, whatever it's going to be, and when I release the key, that's the signal for the, um, for the release phase of the envelope to happen. And then a new interesting thing happens. If I switch the gate source to LFO instead, then we're going to get completely different behavior. And this is going to take a little bit of examination to figure out what's going on. Watch very carefully what this LFO shape is drawing. Got a really fast attack phase there. Let's make it slightly longer. So we've got two distinct parts of the envelope that are being drawn repeatedly. The first phase is getting up to about a third of the way through the decay. And then we're jumping straight to the sustain point and entering the release phase. What's happening is that, watch the LFO curve. Each time it passes the zero point, we're getting half of the envelope being drawn. So every time the amplitude of the LFO is above zero, it goes through the zero point, begins drawing the curve. That's the trigger for the gate being opened. From that point onwards, the envelope starts drawing it itself according to its own rules. What's my attack rate? What's my decay rate? And so it's merrily drawing its envelope shape. Then when the LFO passes through zero into negative amplitude, the envelope jumps to the sustain point and begins drawing its release phase. This is odd <laughs> you know this isn't normal behavior but that's what that's how the LFO interacts with the envelope and I think it's pretty cool if I was to make the attack and decay much faster you can see that while the LFO is in positive territory we stick on the sustain point this is the closest that an LFO can represent the drawing of an envelope it's it's pretty clever so if you if you get the right values on your envelope you can basically kind of reverse engineer how the envelope would look 
if a person was pressing a key and then holding a key and then letting a key go. They've mapped those functions intuitively to how an LFO operates. It's really clever. Let's make this a bit longer again so that we can see what's going on. And now I'm going to press a new button. I'm going to press this button called ADR. What this does is takes the sustain phase out of the equation. We turn the ADSR envelope into an ADR envelope, just a tactic A release. And we're going to get new behavior. Now what's going to happen is that the ADR doesn't care about LFOs going through zero cross points. Every time the LFO begins drawing its shape, which is there and there and there, it's the point when the LFO passes through zero in, an, in a positive direction. Jump briefly over to the LFO. And you can see that's the phase of the envelope. This is the beginning of its shape. Now the envelope is just going to draw itself or as far as it can before the LFO gets back to the beginning of its period. So if I make the envelope really quick and pull all of these values down, we're going to draw the entire envelope. But note it doesn't constantly repeat. It doesn't keep firing the envelope again and again and again. Once an envelope is done, it is done until a new trigger arrives. And the trigger point, if you're talking about LFOs, is the beginning of the drawing of the phase. Basically, one complete period represents a trigger firing and then no more triggers firing until the LFO starts redrawing. In the case of when we're mapped to a keyboard, let's flip back to keyboard for a moment. Every time I press a key, the envelope re-fires but it only happens once. I'm now holding that key down and you're not going to see that envelope again. And because we were in ADR mode then, we didn't even see a release phase. Watch, it goes through the release phase. Make it a bit longer so that it's easier to see. I'm holding my key down and the envelope doesn't care. There is no sustain phase. So just to recap, if you're struggling to kind of get your head around this concept, Cling on to this. An LFO is something that once it starts, it doesn't stop. It just goes on and on and on, wave after wave, never ending. An envelope is not that. It has a beginning, a middle and an end, and then it's done. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.